welcome to this video which is a battle report of my second game at the ETC in Amsterdam 2023. We are up against Team Mexico and I'm still playing for the Netherlands with Red Elves and this is still my army list. Um, so I have done some videos explaining the army list, I will not go into detail too much now. Uh, basically it's one Dread Prince Cowboy. Some supportive magic, three combat blocks and the Beast Breakers of City and Guard and Thunderpack and the rest is all there to support the army. My opponent this game was uh, James Silva from Team Mexico. Um, he's better known as Chai Hammer and he also does his own battle reports on YouTube where he puts in a lot of energy and I have quite some respect for the guy um, because of his energetic battle reports and I, uh, I enjoy watching them as well. Um, so his list, uh, basically it's a list that he has been playing for a long time now I think. Um, he's even given the different uh, models in his army uh, games. Uh, if you know his, uh, his channel then you probably know that the Goblin King on uh, Gargantula is Koopa and then there's, well there's also all kinds of other different names for the units. Uh, but he will probably make a battle report on this one as well. So, the matchup in general, I would say, it's a bit of a risky matchup for me, um, but generally, uh, if he wants to engage in combat, that is fine by me. If he wants to make use of his, uh, his range damage, um, so mostly his bows and also his uh, pyromancy mage, then my elves can evaporate quite quickly, um, uh, especially the obsidian guards don't really like uh, pyromancy that much. They also don't really like bows that much. Um, the Gargantula I didn't really see as a problem with two hunting chariots and just infantry that uh, wounds anything on a 5+. plus. Also the Raptor chariots can deal quite some wounds to, uh, to a Gargantula before it can get to strike basically. And this matchups also the hunting chariots really help to uh, take away his swift strides which is something that Ultra Goblins does sometimes rely on. So this is going to be my deployment in Dawn Assault, um, my opponent picked table sides and then um, I managed to drop on this side. I did want to go for the turn 1 because of his Pyromancy Magic most notably uh, and the two Skewerers can still pose a threat to my uh, Dreadlord. Um, we play King of the Hill I believe, uh, my objective is the bottom right one and his objective is uh, the top left hill, so we both chose a hill. Um, I think I wanted him to not go to the right and he wanted me to not go to the left, but um, King of the Hill is always a bit of a vague scenario in my uh, opinion. Um, so this side, I do have a wall if I really want to uh, to play a bit defensively, but probably that's not going to happen. So after his deployment and my turn 1, uh, the Dark Riders have vanguarded up first to the wall and then are moving in to do a bit of a flanking action and then the rest of the army basically just uh, moves forward to get into charge range to get into control range um, so the hunting chariot on the left is at 18 inches of the trolls the hunting chariot on the right is within 18 inches of the spider they both managed to put down their uh, no swift stride tokens and basically I'm, I'm just ready for the game um, so the only charge at this point that I saw as a problem was the troll charge on the crossbowman. Um, however, with the hunting cha chariot removing swift strike, that would be like a 15 inch charge, I believe, which was a 9. Um, it could also have been an, a, six, a 16 inch charge even, because yeah, I think it's a 16 inch charge. Um, so for me, setup wise, <coughs> I have the uh, crossbows on the left and they're going to be protected by the thunder pack. Uh, in this particular scenario I could have turned the thunder pack a bit more. Um, but I think still if my opponent overruns into the hunting chariot I will be able to draw someone aside to any of his units that uh, would overrun there. Um, then the raptor chariot on the left is there to just do a bit of a longer charge in a later turn, uh, possibly also take care of the Grotlings if they want to chaff me. Beast Breaker is just the main battle line unit. Um, the Cold One, um, the Scorched Lord, is basically trying to either get to the Spider or to uh, chaff up one of his uh, big blocks. 
and then uh, well the obsidian guard are also there to just put pressure on his lines on the right side i also have my other unit of crossbows i was basically hoping for a shootout between his goblins and my crossbows um, he might win that uh, but in that unit is my general and my veteran of discipline so he's gonna have to completely shoot down the unit in order to uh, to well basically reduce my uh, flank to zero over there and he can also shoot at other targets so i would prefer if he shoots at the crossbowmen um, and the raptor chariot in the back i didn't have enough mobility to really give him a, a nice spot to charge through however if i'm going to get some casualties in the crossbows i might get a gap that i can uh, charge through then after his turn and after my turn again this is the situation um, so this is after my charge uh, moves and remain moves could even be at the end of my turn uh, we both took quite some pictures so i rather steadily this time <laughs> took one picture every round and my opponent took a lot of more pictures also zoomed pictures of stuff and uh, well i think his battery board is gonna have to more pretty pictures than uh, than mine um so here on the in the middle i i managed to kill the grotlings um i think i used a chariot for that because i am missing one raptor chariot i think i used a chariot and then he uh i don't know how he got rid of it but he got rid of a chariot uh, otherwise you can see that there's a hunting chariot in the trolls uh, the trolls they charged my crossbowmen uh, they needed a nine um, and they didn't make it uh, spider charged my crossbow my other crossbowmen on the flank i believe and he also didn't make it don't know why he's turned that way because i can't imagine that he charged the obsidian guard oh yeah i charged my uh, cotton chariot into the um, gargantula um, and I managed to do, I think, two or three wounds, a uh, bit too low for my liking. Uh, but my opponent had already hit my Raptor Chariot with a, uh, with a Skewer, I believe. So it only had like one or two wounds left. So I was like, okay, I'll just trade some wounds uh, because it's likely gonna, gonna die anyway. Otherwise, uh, left flank I corrected a little bit with the crossbows uh, being out of range of the Paralog. The Thunderpack's ready for a counter charge if my opponent wants to move forward. Uh, that's basically a good matchup for me right here now because I think over the turns I am going to be able to whittle down my opponent's Paralogs with my shooting and then the Thunderpack can uh, uh, swipe in to clean up the remains. My hunting chariot and the trolls failed the frenzy test and had to charge so basically that's a hunting chariot that's just gone um it's a shame but yeah discipline eight uh, is not too high of course it, it can happen in your games um i'm not really bothered by it because usually units that you can charge also include units that you can break with a hunting chariot um in this specific case i have three combat units that i'm facing and uh, none of which were too far to get a charge on um so sometimes you can just also still declare a charge at a target that you well you only make it on a 12. usually those targets are also the targets that if you make it your opponent is a bit in trouble so uh then we have the raptor prince <laughs> in the middle of the field <laughs> Uh, this is basically why I include him in this army. Uh, he's just standing there in front of the Iron Orcs. If you calculate what's going to happen if he charges me and tries to kill me, then he can strike with Great Weapon Iron Orcs. Um, I think that would be the best solution because then on the charge he's going to be strength 7, I believe. And then if he remains steadfast, he is going to remain strength 7 for a longer time. Um, so that would be three ranks deep which is nine attacks nine attacks um rating on four plus winning on a two plus with ap4 i have a one at re-roll i would say it's dicey for me to win uh what i didn't realize is that he has mechanox totem so he can turn off one of my magic items and that could be dusk forged so he could probably just kill me with uh, the iron orcs with the great weapons um 
after just one round of combat. But it, it's also a bit luck based because he still has to hit me, and that's going to be uh, the most important role there. Um, but then again, I just wanted to break open the field here. Uh, so I am looking for his charge. If he doesn't charge me, I'm also quite happy to just be able to uh, charge to uh, the spider. If he wants to charge me with the spider, I'm also quite happy. Um, so basically, it's just breaking up the board, um, making sure that he cannot get a charge where he wants to, but I get to dictate where the charges are going to happen. Um, and then, yeah, if I manage to stick, it's it's going to be over for the Iron Hawks, I imagine, because then I can put in a unit of Beast Breakers, unit of Obsidian Guard, or Raptor Chariot. And between that, I think he would not really survive that. Um, on the right, we have a shootout between my crossbowmen and his um, his archers. I might even have shot at his gargantula at this point, just to whittle it down a little bit more. I also have my shadow riders on the right side, uh, so they fled from uh, the shooting of the unit all the way in the back, the, the skirmishing goblins. Um, they did rally this turn, and I forgot about them for the rest of the game. <laughs> so it was only at the end of the game that I realized, like, oh, fuck, wait, I still have these Shadow Riders here. Um, yeah, so this is what's happening after his turn. So, wait, I don't know how it's possible that this Hunting Chariot is still there. Uh, from the previous picture, I believe uh, the hunting chariot survived the first round magically, and then the second round, it's gonna die now, basically. But um, my opponent does charge in with the iron hawks on the dread prince. He does charge in with the very big spider onto my crossbowman. Yeah, uh, this is not a bad situation right now i would say and because i do have my counter charge ready for the iron hawks i do have a counter charge ready for the uh, crossbowmen so the crossbowmen they um they are academy trained they are within eight inches of the obsidian guard so they count as having an extra rank as long as they have five or more models remaining i do have a champion in the unit so i can just uh, jewel the the spider out and be for uh, be steadfast guaranteed um so i will be making that check and i uh, i will manage so the next turn well you can see that the obsidian guard have decreased a bit in size this is because this is a magic phase where he actually focused on dealing damage on the obsidian guard and that was quite successful um so he had like 50 bow shots that went into the obsidian guard hitting on fives but then again that was already like eight wounds or something, and then the magic he had pyroclastic flow and something else, and it was just like ten wounds on the obsidian guard or something. It was, it was brutal. So I only have five obsidian guard left. Um, you can see the stack of wounds actually on the gargantula on the right. So there's one, two, three, four, five wounds on it now, I believe. So it only has three wounds left. Is this going to be enough? Well, that is that is. Uh, very interesting question. In the middle, I do manage to uh, to stick against the Iron Hawks because my opponent actually um, he turned off my shield breaker and he dueled with his um, his orc Iron Hawk Lord. Um, so in this case, he would have he has shady shanking, so he has five attacks, I believe, that hit me on three plus and wound me on two plus with lethal strike. And rerolls the wound. Um, I do keep my Dusk Forged, however, and I keep Strength for if you want to attack. So, against his one of rerollable because he has the Dex card, so he can take mine. So, yeah, that is a duel where he's gonna do some wounds to me, probably, and I'm not gonna do any to him. Um, but I'm also fine with that if, if my dude just functions as an anvil, then I'm, I'm completely fine. So my counter charge here is the Beast Breakers, and one of the Raptor Chariots and a Hunting Chariot. And we will see how much damage that does. On the left side I do try to uh, force a bit of an engagement uh, with his Feralorks against my crossbows. Um, so the Thunderpack have 
turned a little bit to make sure that I can always see him when he goes for an overrun and I can quite reliably charge him if he stays where he is uh, and does a reform. I did decide to not really care about the trolls at this moment because um, basically I can, um, well he can charge on the crossbows or he can charge on the other side towards the raptor chariot. Those are both possibilities. If he wants to go in the Raptor Chariot, he's going to uh, end up in the front of my chariot, which is not an issue, I think. If magically I do manage to remove his general this turn, then, um, well, basically he's going to be Discipline 4, and I can risk to, uh, to give him a charge somewhere. But we will see what happens. So the next picture shows that there is still Smyrnox, there is no Gargantula though anymore. So the Obsidian Guard being 5 strong, they do manage to, to put on the 3 wounds on the Gargantula. Um, freeing up my crossbows and uh, giving me back my right flank, even though it looks like the Obsidian Guard are gonna die against all that shooting over there. Uh, on the left side, uh, well that is still stable after combat, um, and in the middle I managed to Kill, I believe it was 18 Iron Orcs. So his Iron Orc unit is uh, quite small now, um, and I do get a wound on my Dread Prince. I don't do anything to his unit, to his uh, character, but um, he's going to be uh, st uh, stubborn and he will make the roll. If we go into his turn, he does charge in with the trolls onto the Raptor Chariot, giving him some uh, some combat rest there. Um, and otherwise, he does charge in with the Paralox onto my crossbowman. Uh, well, not that much else is happening in this picture. Afterwards, uh, after the combat, he does manage to destroy my Raptor Chariot. Uh, I do manage to clean up the uh, board. <laughs> I do manage to clean up the Iron Orcs, um, breaking the, the uh, character on combat rest. Uh, then I pursue the character, I believe I do catch him, I charge his other unit that was in the back, uh, that one, uh, I believe he actually flees with it, the hunting chariot um, charged there, and then the beast breakers, they charge the other unit or something. The raptor dude ends up in the scourer, and uh, the thunder pack do, as I planned. Uh, clean up the uh, the Faralogs on the left, or at least what was remaining. I believe after the charge, he could strike back with four Faralogs or something. Um, so that was not enough to uh, to annihilate any Thunder Packs. Yeah, so this is then the board state. Um, at this point, my opponent has a unit of Discipline 4 Trolls that can still maybe <laughs> charge into my Beast Breakers. Um, and he has a scourer that can still shoot. I do manage later to overrun with the uh, raptor uh, model to a place where <laughs> he cannot shoot it because um, the hunting chariot is in the way. If he would have made the uh, discipline check for the uh, trolls, I was thinking like, well, you're gonna have a fl uh, rear charge, sure, uh, you can have a big rear. I'm gonna have my five comma dress uh, of my uh, or six comma dress of my four ranks and my two banners. So you will likely make me take a, a break test. However, in the next round I can probably turn around, uh, cast a spell, and then uh, then it's also uh, over for the trolls. Um, however, he doesn't make it um, and. I do manage to charge into the rear of his trolls with my thunder pack with glory of gold. Um, basically meaning that all the trolls were gone before they could strike. Uh, yeah, and this is going to be the end of the battle. It's going to be a 20-0 for the Dread Elves. It was a highly enjoyable game, I would say. Um, my opponent was a, a true sportsmanship hero all the time throughout the game not being uh, sad about losing or anything um, and yeah we just played a very casual very nice game um, I would say that uh, I would have made some different choices if I were him like for example uh, uh, I think the deployment he could have gone a bit more back 
uh, but I don't know if he was expecting me to, to move up as aggressively as I did. I would not have used my war cry first turn if I were him, um, because uh, using the war cry means that I don't have to dictate anymore where he's going to lose his swift strike. And otherwise, well, just targets. Um, so the crossbow or the, the um, bowman could have uh, shot at the obsidian guard earlier. Um, I think that's way more important than shooting at the uh, at the crossbowman um, and focusing a bit more on the range damage from the magic. Anyway, that is going to be the game. Um, we both had a, a blast playing the game and good fun. Um, and with that, I will see you. The next time. Thank you for watching.